We continue our look on the power situation in the country and a possible solution to coming out of the darkness. We're not being joined by Professor Shagun Aderbibge. Uh, he's a mechanical engineering professor at uh, the university, and he joins us to look at the situation of uh, that part in the, in the country. Good morning, and thanks for joining us. Very quickly, you've had the new power uh, minister speaking on this particular one. You had also given talks in times past concerning ways uh, we can get out of this. And uh, uh, yesterday we also had uh, uh, Dr. Oke who was proffering solutions to some of those problems. Perhaps very quickly, let's go through the problems and uh, before we come back to the solutions because now is the time for us to start talking about ways of getting out of uh, <laughs> the log jam or the darkness we're experiencing. What have you found out as a big problem when we talk about power situation in Nigeria? Well, the challenges for power in Ni the power sector in Nigeria are really centered around the reliability of supply, the availability of adequate supply, and the quality of it. However, and of course the pricing, those challenges have their origin in the way and manner we structure our power sector and the role of both the ministry and the regulator. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say on, for the record that the management of the power sector squarely rests on the regulator not the minister. It's like trying to expect in the, the telecom sector, the minister talking about the performance of MTN or GLO when the NCC is there. So in this case, we're talking about NEC, NERC. Exactly. So I will advise that the minister, uh, Mr. Fashola, should restrain himself from talking about the operation of the power sector because it doesn't have adequate information. The problem might be briefed by the NEC chairman or whoever is coming from there, but the responsibility according to the law, when you look at section 32 of the Electricity Act of 2005, it puts the responsibility on NEC. And section 33 only it says that the minister may prefer policy guidelines. So the minister's responsibility as far as NEC is concerned as far as oversight? If you call it oversight, yes, the minister can summon him, summon the chairman and say, brief me about this situation, just for the record, but not because he could do anything about them. So the challenges in the power sector now, you talked about reliability of supply mm -hmm. and availability of adequate supply. Mm -hmm. the, does it now mean that the regulator has not been performing optimally? I believe presently we have a weak regulator. And this was predictable. <laughs> when initially they wanted to constitute the regulatory body, which is supposed to be made up of seven commissioners, and you put four lawyers there. Some of us raised the issue that the essence of regulation is technical, it's not legal. The legal framework has been properly done and has been enacted into law. Because a regulator is supposed to be a visioner, not a manager. You must see two or three steps ahead of everybody to mitigate future challenges. And except you have a background in the area you want to regulate, you'll be looking without seeing, hearing without understanding. And this is what we are going through. Incidentally, the, pre, I mean, the former president, President uh, Jonathan, removed two of the four lawyers and still made one of them the chairman. The challenge that gives us is that he looks at it as a manager, the situation will be confronted with a situation, and then you start wondering, what do we do? That's not the work of a regulator. Before the problem comes to you, 
he has anticipated it and he's taking a decision that he was going to mitigate the impact on the consumer. Can you imagine a regulator saying that the operator should go and negotiate with the stakeholders the new tariff? Until recently, who are the stakeholders? All of us. Which hotel, which stadium will accommodate millions of people when we are going through this I mean, exchange? Are you going to involve somebody in Ajegunle and uh, bring them together with somebody in Ikoyi and say, you know, we want to increase your tariff? I'm just wondering, though, I mean, you have said that there's only so much the minister can do in, yeah. because, of, I mean, regulation is really not under his purview, as it were. Okay. But if you look at his briefing, uh, the text of his briefing, would you say that he has gone outside his purview? No, 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 no. He's been properly briefed in the sense that he has a good overview. Mm. But now, how do you provide policy direction to the sector mm. that will also aid future activities in the sector? For example, there are many areas where the government can contribute to reliable supply of electricity and affordable. Mm -hmm. One area is in metering. There is no metering <coughs> policy in the country, even though we have a specification for metering. But there was one b before it, it was opened up. It was opened up, right? No, 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 no. Wasn't there? That metering has limited application in terms of specifications for prepaid meter. Mm -hmm. I used to be a member of the metering panel, and we had to come out with new guidelines, new specifications, which took the regulator a long time to act, to act upon. And it's because the chairman has no feel for the importance of that. That is one aspect. Gas is another aspect that requires a lot of policy. Right now, we're talking about increasing tariff. But the gas input, there are five reasons, I mean, five issues that have to be considered before you increase the tariff, according to my two. The exchange rate, the gas price, um, the inflation rate in the country, and of course, the cost of it to the disco and the cost of it to the distribution company. Now, the issue is that gas pricing is a very serious one. My two, I, I mean, NNPC has already set the pricing for so many years. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, they are changing, and there might be reasons too. But the Ministry of uh, Power has no, appears to be that they don't have any bargaining power. They just accept whatever is given, which is, which is not correct. They should negotiate with them. And I believe, in terms of subsidy, gas should be subsidized at the level of production, not at the consumer end. Just like subsidizing the electricity, not at the consumer end. So right now, it is, a, is it the tariffs that are being subsidized? No. You see, gas is an input into generation. Mm -hmm. And it is passed on to the consumer. So if arbitrarily NMPC says, I'm increasing my gas tariff for the sale of gas from $2.50 per thousand standard cubic feet, or per million standard cubic feet, to $3.00. 30 cents, and you just accept it. It means that there will be a corresponding increase in the tariff to the consumer of electricity, because it's a pass-through. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is this, 